live number 16 from Unicat here in Germany. Uh, hot summer day. Uh, I need some water. <laughs> so <laughs> we are uh, just there where, where we want to talk about today. Um, fresh water, gray water, black water, um, how to get it, how to store it, how to treat it, and how to use it. Um, let me say, let me talk a few minutes about uh, some basic things and then um, I'm very happy to answer any question that's coming in from you. So um, I think that um, uh, an important calculation uh, everybody or every traveler has to make is how much water do I need? How much water do I have to have on board? Um, and um, the, the one part of it is how long uh, do you want to live from that water? Yeah? A few days, a week, two weeks, three weeks, um, and how much water do you use per day? Now, uh, statistically, in, in the United States, the average person uses almost 300 liters per day, um, which is like, uh, um, what is it, 70, 80 gallons. Uh, in Germany, statistically, it's half of that, uh, like 130 liters, uh, which is still like 40 gallons. And in India, for example, people use typically 25 liters per day and person, uh, which is uh, eight, seven, eight gallons. So um, obviously in a vehicle, um, you can't use that much water every day. Uh, otherwise you need enormous tanks, which would also mean you carry enormous weight with you. Um, so, um, um, you have to see how much water you really need. Yeah? Um, so, it, and it depends on, on what systems you have on board. Uh, so typically, um, in a vehicle, if you, if you don't really save water, if you just live comfortably, but pay attention to your water consumption, you would typically need about 30 to 35 liters means eight to nine gallons roughly per day and per person. Uh, um, like 15 to 20 liters, four to five gallons of this is for shower and for washing, cleaning, taking care of yourself. Um, and then approximately five liters or a bit more than a gallon uh, for cooking and drinking. Another like four liters for doing the dishes, uh, another five liters for laundry and, and other cleaning. And uh, we are calculating only with one liter or um, quarter gallon um, to flush the toilet. Yeah? While in, um, in a normal house, um, you need a, a lot of water just to flush the toilet. Yeah? So uh, in, statistically in Germany, it's like 33 liters per day, means only nine gallons you just need or you just use to, to flush your toilet. Um, and um, so, I mean, you, it's, it's nice to be able to have a shower and uh, to brush your teeth and wash yourself. So that's, I think is indispensable thing to, to, to use some water for that. Um, then um, for, for, I have to, to look the numbers here next door on my screen. Um, for doing the, 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 the dishes, you definitely need some water. Um, and uh, for, uh, yeah, for flushing the toilet, it's great if you only use a quarter of a, of a gallon so that's the best thing to save uh, water consumption. Uh, now, from my own experience, I need about 30 to 35 liters um, per day if we travel with two people. Uh, and, and that includes shower every day, 
um, and um, uh, so we are not we are not really saving money, but um, we are also not uh, just running the water and wasting it. Uh, so now with with uh, let's say 30, 35 liters per day per person, um, we uh, can uh, can stay for for five days. If we would have 400 liters, uh, which I think is the minimum of uh, water capacity you should have on board. And uh, if you have a larger vehicle, uh, which uh, where, the, where the weight doesn't count as much, um, in most vehicles we go up to 800 to 1,000, sometimes even 1,200 liters. Uh, and that gives you two weeks, three weeks comfortably. And that's actually great um, because um, um, you have enough time um, to, to refill your tanks, uh, to find the source. And uh, often um, the, the source you, you find by surprise. Uh, it's not planned. It's not like you go to a gas station and there is water. Um, and, and therefore, if you, if you have three, three weeks time or two weeks time uh, to refill water, then you don't really have to search so much because you just wait for the opportunity to get water. But of course, then you have to take the opportunity. Even if it's only after, after one week and your tanks are half full still, I would fill up my tanks completely to give me another two weeks um, to, to find another source for fresh water. Uh, so um, don't run it down to, to 10% or say, okay, today we need water, otherwise we, we don't have water anymore tomorrow. That's a very bad situation. And uh, then, um, yeah, you, you, you maybe drive hundreds of kilometers just uh, to find water uh, rather than um, using a source along the road or, or a river or wherever you pass and where you have the opportunity to take water. Um, yeah, but, but you have to wait for that opportunity and the longer your tanks last, the, the more opportunities will come up. So, um, okay, so as I said, 400 liters, I think it's a minimum, two people for one week. I mean, if you, if you reduce your consumption, of course, it, it's, uh, it lasts longer. Um, but if, if you can have like 600 liters or 800 liters, uh, then uh, uh, it's great. Let's say 200 liters per person is somehow the minimum. Uh, um, kids need a little less water. So if you travel with two adults, two kids, uh, we typically put 600 liters, um, uh, also driven by the fact that the area where we can install the tanks um, have that limitations. Um, ideally, we would put 700 or 800, but if you have a smaller vehicle and you have many people, um, you have to cut down on, on everything, on storage area, on, um, uh, on water reservoirs and water tanks. Um, yeah, pretty much on everything. Um, so you can also reduce your water consumption by uh, using bottled water for drinking, uh, which many people do, uh, me included, because uh, the taste of the water you find is not always great, um, but it's okay to, to take a shower and uh, to do the dishes, but I wouldn't want to make my coffee with it uh, or, or drink it. And uh, you find bottled waters in most countries on, on this planet these days. So uh, yeah, many people use it and, uh, and it's quite common to, to to use bottled water for drinking, and which means you save about five liters per day um, if you drink enough, and uh, um, and that yeah extends your range uh, of the tanks as well. 
Um, okay, if you if you want to to save water, um, uh, you, you you can do that also with shower. For example, we have um, on some vehicles we have a water recirculation system, um, which um, takes the water from the floor of the shower before it goes into the drain and recirculates it and adds as much hot water so that the temperature is kept. Of course, you, you only do that if you want to take a longer shower and after you have washed yourself and the water that's rinsing down your body is pretty much clean so that it's not uh, critical uh, to reuse that water to, to take uh, or to continue that same shower. Uh, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a not too complex system, but it helps. I mean, you, you can, you only need like 5% of the water uh, for the shower to continue. So from a, from a three, four, five minute shower, you can make a 20 minute shower under hot water under yeah and um, and just use um, yeah and not not very much more water than than you would use if you just take the the shower for cleaning and we also have installed a water timer on one vehicle where uh, a guy was traveling with with friends uh, who were not familiar with the with the specialties of uh, um, having limited water available. So uh, that, that was a timer. So you started the water and then it uh, gave you three minutes of water. Um, if you close the tap, it stops the counter. If you reopen, it continues counting until three minutes were over. And then um, you had to wait 15 minutes before it released water again. Uh, so that's that's also a way to uh, um, to stop um, um, people to, to to use too much water. Uh, of course, he had a button where he could uh, disconnect the timer for himself. Uh, that's clear. <coughs> okay. So uh, now you, you need um, yeah, let's say four hundred to one thousand liter of water capacity. That, that's a good number. And uh, now, how, how do you store it? I mean, um, we, we install the whole water system, uh, fresh water, all hoses, pumps, tubing, even the gray water tank and the black water tank inside the body. So we don't have any issues with traveling in winter time because um, the body is a, is a very well insulated shelter and everything that's inside um, will be at least above a freezing point. Even so, it's behind uh, uh, furniture and it's on the outer walls. Uh, it's not going to freeze um, because you have some heating on in the body if you are living in the body. Uh, so that's the easiest way um, to, or the best way to do it, not, not necessarily the easiest way, um, but we consequently do that with some exceptions if there is no other choice or if it's a vehicle that really only goes to hot climates, um, then we also allow uh, um, um, especially grey water tank uh, on the outside. Um, yeah, so we, we typically um, install at least two water tanks and uh, with the two water tanks come two water pumps and then a water distribution system. The, uh, the, the simple reason is redundancy. Uh, so if one water tank would leak or would be contaminated, uh, then you still have your other water tank. Uh, so that's why I also recommend that when you use your water tanks, don't use one 
completely to the end and then switch to the other tank. No, I would say go with one tank down to 50%, switch to the other tank and run it down completely and then switch back to the other tank. Um, because if you, if you run your first tank down to zero and then the other tank has a problem, then you're also out of water. Uh, I mean, not, not completely out of water uh, because you can somehow transfer the water but it's, it's just the better way to, uh, to run one tank 50% than the other one and uh, then only switching back. Um, we, uh, yeah, we installed two tanks, we installed two water pumps or even three or four uh, water tanks and pumps, um, especially in the, in the larger vehicles, in the three axle vehicles uh, or four axle vehicles. Um, you can put a lot of weight on the two rear axles and that allows us to put a water tank um, at the very back of the vehicle um, uh, and it's quite far away from, from the other tanks so they need uh, separate pumps uh, uh, anyway. Huh? And um, uh, so with, uh, yeah, with three or four tanks of course the, the redundancy, the safety is uh, also much higher. Um, while typically the, the main water tanks we try to install in the center of the vehicle between the axles. Same for the, for the fuel tanks, which are typically on the chassis between the axles, just to keep the influence of full or empty tanks uh, on the weight distribution as little as possible. Um, Okay, now the, the water goes to the water distribution system and, and we always run an independent hose from the water distribution system to each tap you know, or to each consumer, whether it's the toilet, uh, the shower, uh, the, the bathroom sink, uh, the kitchen sink, it's always an independent cold water and hot water supply. And we have valves in the, in the, in the water distribution system, uh, so you can shut off each single line. Um, also for redundancy and, and for safety, uh, because if, if you would have a leak somewhere between the water distribution and the tap or on the tap itself, uh, then you can just shut off that particular tap and you can still use uh, all the other tabs and, and you don't have to, to uh, find uh, a workshop or find somebody to fix it instantly. Now you can just continue with a little um, reduction of your equipment. Um, okay, so um, the, let me see. Okay, we have the separate tanks, we have the everything inside, we have, uh, yeah, we use we use really strong pumps, um, not because we want to have a super high pressure in the vehicle, but we are also using tubing to the taps with a relatively small diameter. Um, and if you have a relatively small diameter, but you still want to have a lot of water arriving there, then you need a strong pump. Okay. So now the question is why, why do we use small pipes and not, not just bigger pipes? Um, the, there are two reasons. Um, the, the one reason is that in the hot water line, um, you, the, the water will cool down. Um, and um, so the more cold water you have in the hot lot water line, the more hot water or water generally you're wasting um, until you, you get the, the right temperature at the tap. Uh, so if, if, the, if the tube is twice the diameter, um, it's, it's much more volume and, and you're, 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 wasting, yeah, you're wasting water when you want to use uh, hot water. Um, the second reason is that with a, with a, with a smaller tube diameter, the, the, the speed inside the tube 
is higher. And uh, that's called a turbulent flow. Yeah? You can have laminar flow, which is uh, when the water is just flowing very gently through the tube. Um, and that's like, like a very slow river. Yeah? While uh, turbulent flow is like a, a very fast river, um, a white water river, for example. And um, what you can see on these types of rivers as a difference that, that you can also see um, in, the, in the water tubes means the turbulent flow is cleaning the tube from inside all the time. Yeah? And, and that's why on a, on a white river, uh, on a white water river, you will hardly find any uh, greenish stuff uh, or slime or whatever. Um, while if you have a river, uh, which flows very, very slowly, uh, you have um, all, all kinds of green stuff, uh, which uh, typically means there's bacteria grow. And um, yeah, with, with turbulent flow, you, you just clean your system all the time. Uh, and that's why we use storm pumps to get that uh, flow speed in the, in the tubes. Um, okay, of course, uh, all, the, all the materials you use there uh, need to be uh, food grade quality. And um, now the, sometimes the question is, okay, how, how can I know that it's all food grade? And, and one, beside certificates and, and descriptions, of course, um, uh, one, one very simple way to, to recognize this is if it doesn't smell, it typically is okay. Uh, but if it smells, if it smells plastic, it's definitely not food grade uh, because something comes out of it, and and that's uh, that's not what what you want to inhale or or eat. Uh. So just smell on the materials and and or and if they smell um, plastic, especially, then you know it's not food grade. It's not good quality material. Um, of course, you should also use uh, proper uh, faucets and taps. Uh, they just last longer. They are better to adjust, especially if you work with thermostats. Um, the, yeah, there, there are big differences in the quality. So the, the preciseness of, of, the, of the temperature you get out, even if the, if the pressure is, is changing, um, is it's it's much better on a on a high quality tap rather than on a on a cheap one. Uh, um, another thing we do for saving energy and water is that after the the heat exchanger, which provides the hot water, we already put a thermostat valve there, a mixer valve, which is. Um, um, mixing the hot water from the hot water reservoir with cold water from the tank to get a constant temperature into the hot water line arriving at the taps. Uh, that's for two reasons. I mean, in uh, hot water reservoir is like 40 to 60 liters, means if, uh, if you use a lot of water, the temperature in the hot water reservoir goes down further and further. So the, the, the incoming temperatures, cold and hot, are changing. And, and if you don't have a, a thermostat mixer, you always have to adjust your, your temperature at the tap, um, which is kind of a waste of water because while you adjust, you're not using it and you are checking, is the temperature right? And uh, um, you can prevent that by stabilizing the hot water temperature at, let's say, 40 degrees Celsius, which um, you don't want to have it hotter anyway, or if you want, you adjust it to 50 degrees, um, that's up to you. But uh, when, when the hot water in the heat exchanger is like 60 to 70 degrees, uh, then by the mixer, you always have 40 degree hot water in the in the lines to the uh, 
uh, taps until the temperature in the hot water heat exchanger is getting below that 40 degree Celsius temperature. So that's another way of uh, saving water by not fiddling with adjusting uh, water temperature. Um, yeah, so uh, now, okay, what, what do you do uh, before, when, when you, how, how do you keep your water clean and fresh? How do you treat it? Uh, um, well, our approach is that the tanks inside the vehicle should always be super clean. Uh, so don't put contaminated water straight into the tank. Make sure it's clean water, it's drinkable water. Um, because once you have the contamination in the tank, it's very difficult uh, to get this out. Uh, um, when, the, when the water is in the tank, you can still treat it. You can treat it uh, with a, a silver iron and chlorine uh, product, uh, which uh, kills bacteria and, uh, and the silver ions keep the water fresh and prevents um, recontamination for up to six months. So that, that's uh, a typical way to do it, especially if you are not traveling um, too long at a time. But um, um, another way uh, of keeping the water fresh is uh, UV radiation. Uh, but that's not a very um, common technology here in vehicles, at, at least not at our vehicles, because um, the, the UV lamp, um, which can um, uh, create or provide the UVC uh, radiation, uh, they are typically with glass these days. Um, um, and, and, the, and the glass tube is very sensitive and can break easily. And that's why it's not really uh, expedition proven. We are actually waiting for proper LED UVC uh, radiation lights. But the problem with LEDs is uh, that, that it's very difficult to, to make them uh, radiate the right uh, wavelength, which is like uh, 256 nanometers. Uh, that's the that's wavelength that really cracks uh, the, um, the bacteria, virus, uh, the, no, I don't know the, the word in English, the, 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 the reproduction information. Uh, so they, they cannot reproduce themselves uh, and if you give them enough radiation, you even kill them directly. Uh, so that's a nice way. There is no chemical um, involved. If, if the, if the uh, wavelength is quite precise, you would also do not build up ozone. Um, but uh, we are actually waiting for, for the right uh, LED lights. And then I think we will use it uh, quite often. You know? And then you don't necessarily have to have to use uh, um, the chemical products. No. But of course, that that the, the lamps need some some uh, electricity, and you also have to circulate the the water through that um, lamp housing. Uh, so you need some some power. So when when you leave the vehicle alone for a couple of weeks, uh, that's not the way to continue. Um, uh, uh, keeping the water fresh, then you would need some some chemicals. Um, now, um, keeping the, the tanks clean means um, you need to uh, to clean it before outside, um, and uh, that's a better way anyway. Because I don't know any filtration system where you where where you do not drip water or, or, or make a little bit of a mess, especially when, when you back flush the, the filter. So having a strong pump, maybe a submersible pump, so you can take water from a river um, and, uh, and, and run it through a strainer, run it through a filter, 
that's that's a good way to to clean it. Uh, some people even use uh, reverse osmosis systems, uh, but that's taking a long time uh, because uh, they are pretty slow if they are on in an acceptable size. Um, and uh, you need a lot of water because you only get a fraction of the water as uh, fresh water, clean fresh water in your tank. A lot of water is washed back. Um, and so you can do that when you are at the river or even at the seaside, uh, but you cannot do that if you have a limited uh, water source. Yeah, so there are other filt filter types like uh, active carbon filters. Um, and um, I, I would also only use them outside. I have seen, we, we have installed all kinds of filters in vehicles, but at the end of the day, the vehicles came back and there was, there was more bacteria and, and dirt and everything in the filter uh, because then you have a separate uh, water outlet. You only use the water if needed. And if you don't frequently use and use the filters and, and run water through the systems, then bacteria will build up uh, even in an in a active carbon filter. And, and that's why um, you have to be very careful if you, if you use such filters in the vehicle, while if you use them outside, um, you put them in line uh, with your with your pump, and the hose goes into the into the vehicle. And once the water tanks are full, you you open your your filters, you clean, you wash the filter, and you let it dry out. And only if it's dry, no bacteria can grow in the filter. Well, so another reason really to do it outside and to do it really under control. Um, okay. Um, uh, a few more words about uh, uh, grey water system. Um, what, of course, it's it's not so easy to to find fresh water. Sometimes, normally, when you go to a gas station, they will give you water. So when you go to a gas station and you need water and, and you buy fuel from them, so they give you water. Check if they have water before, otherwise, go and find another gas station, which is much easier than finding. Uh, places to, to get water um, and also ask if they are happy to give you water. Uh, otherwise, then you fill up like uh, 200 gallons of fuel you pay and then they send you away. That's, that's, not, that's not great. Um, so gas stations um, in Russia, for example, no, the gas stations don't have water um, be because they, they don't have taps outside. Because it's most of the year it's so cold that it, the taps are always freezing, so they they don't want to have uh, water outside. Uh, but they have truck wash and car wash places. And uh, when we went uh, to Mongolia uh, two years ago, uh, we just refilled the tanks at a at a truck wash station, and we got the trucks washed at the same time. So we had to pay a little bit for, for the water, but I think, I mean, water is a valuable resource and I think it's, it's okay to pay for water. Uh, um, so because it's so more difficult to get fresh water, um, we, we make the tanks as big as possible. Uh, um, and that means as you only have a certain volume available in the whole vehicle, um, we make the grey water tank small. Uh, typically, the grey water tank is only a quarter of the fresh water tank because it's much, much easier um, to get rid of uh, grey water, especially um, if it's somewhere in the countryside. Um, yeah, you, you won't find that easily fresh water, but you can easily get rid of grey water. Um, black water tank. Um, also, we typically have uh, 100 liters, uh, so 20, 26, 27 gallons, 250 liters, like uh, what is that? Um, um, let's see, uh, 40, like let's say 40 gallons. 
and and uh, that's good for 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 two weeks maybe three weeks with two people uh, you typically need including everything including flushing like three liters let's say three quarters of a gallon per day uh, i have that number from statistics as well um, except that um, we only calculate with half a liter to one liter of water to flush because we use toilet systems which don't need water to flush uh, because the tank sits directly under the toilet bowl and gravity just makes it fall into the tank and the water is just to keep the bowl clean and to make the whole thing a little bit easier. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, um, I think that's uh, my introduction to to water system. Um, I'm I'm happy to answer your question. Okay, so there's yes, first question. So Victor is asking any tips to keep your grey water environment friendly, so you have the possibility to empty in remote places. Well, um, I I never put chemicals into the grey water tank. Uh, first of all, with the size of grey water tank compared to fresh water tank, um, I have to empty my grey water tank every second or third day. Uh, and within that time, um, it, there is not building up bacteria or, or, or that much bacteria that, um, that you would uh, need to put chemicals in uh, to, uh, um, yeah, to, to, to keep it clean enough so that it doesn't smell. Of course, um, try not to put fat into the, the, the gray water when you do the dishes. So if we have butter or fat on the, on the dishes, we take that off first um, because fat is, is perfect food for, for uh, bacteria and it will grow faster. Um, but if you, if you have to empty your gray water tank every two or three days, I don't see need um, to add some chemicals and as long as you don't put chemicals and if your if your soap is uh, environment uh, environment friendly then you can just release the water okay uh, technical question uh, what type of sensors do you do you use to snacks i think means what type of sensors do you use in your tanks yeah well um that's a that, that's a good question. Um, tank sensors are important on the one hand, uh, but they are also sensitive. So honestly, ideally, you have a, a glass tube or a plastic tube uh, where it directly indicates uh, the water level. But in most cases, you just do not have the opportunity to install such a tube in a in a visible way, but if you build your own vehicle, and I don't know what your what your setup is, if you have the opportunity to do this, just do it. It's it always works, huh? and it's so easy, and uh, it, it never lies. Huh? Um, so, with electrical sensors, um, we we typically. Uh, use uh, no, flo floating devices which have uh, a couple of switches uh, so you every 10 percent uh, it shows you uh, yeah uh, relatively exactly how much water you have there is another system which works with uh, positive pressure so um, um, it's it's uh, pumping some air into the tank of course, the ventilation has to be closed at that time, and by the by the raise of the of the pressure, the the little computer calculates how much water is left um, in your tank. Imagine your tank is is empty, uh, and you add some air. Your pressure goes only up a little bit. If your tank is completely full, 
and you add the same amount of air, your pressure is raising more. And, and from, from these figures, you can calculate how much water you have left in your tanks. Um, it's, uh, it, yeah, there is uh, nothing that touches. And uh, so that's a very good system, uh, but it's super expensive. Okay, Michael is asking, you normally put all water tanks inside the body, but do you make any lot of holes in the body for drainage and for filling up tanks? Can you talk, talk more about pipes, both water uh, supply and drain pipes? Well, we, we do not make, well, of course, we make a hole um, to install the, the tank filler device, which is above tank level. Uh, and then you open it and, and you put a hose in um, and, and you fill your tank. Uh, um, we also have devices where you, where you can fill your water tanks with pressurized water. But that's, uh, um, you, you have to make a shutoff valve and a pressure limiter because a normal tank uh, is not built for high pressure. Uh, so like, let's say like for, uh, maybe uh, five PSI, 0 point, uh, 0 point 0 0.1, 0 0.2 bar. Uh, that's what, what a typical tank is built for. That, that's fine, but uh, yeah, but, but you have to know that. And if you, if you put water in um, with like uh, 70, 80 PSI or five, six bar, your, your tank will definitely blow up um, if there is no nothing that prevents overfilling of the tank. Um, okay, so, uh, well, piping, we, we use, uh, um, yeah, rubber pipes, plastic pipes, uh, which are covered with, uh, with uh, stainless steel. So they are super protected. Uh, we have special tools to, to clamp uh, the, to, to connect the, the, the tubes so there are no, no uh, uh, what is it called? No, Schlauchschellen. Uh, I, you know what I mean. I mean, um, so there's, there's professional tooling available to, uh, to make a proper um, water distribution system. Um, you should also look uh, so that, that you don't have corners or, or any places in the tubes where, where the water is not flowing, where it's just sitting. Um, other than that, um, what can I tell you about tubes? I mean, uh, yeah, should, should be okay for a higher pressure, should be chemical resistant, should be food grade. Um, yeah. Okay, Patrick is asking, dry toilets. Um, well, we are quite happy with our uh, toilets, which are not really dry toilets, but they use only very, very little water for flushing. Uh, but we have the advantage that we have a, a real porcelain uh, um, toilet bowl. It's, it's very convenient. It's, it's very comfortable. Um, while uh, dry toilets just need a bit more service. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a way of, of doing it, yes, but, but um, we actually don't use it uh, in our vehicles. How do you empty the water system in winter? Well, um, of course, when, when, the, when it's freezing cold, and you're not living in the vehicle, you won't run a heater to keep it above a freezing level. Um, uh, and, and therefore you have to have a way to, to empty your whole water system. And we do actually do it with uh, pressurized air. Um, so we have uh, an access um, to, the, to the water distribution system where you just connect air pressure, which you have in a truck anyway. Um, and then, of course, you have to get rid of the oil that might be in the, in the 
air pressure system of the truck. Um, and um, then you just blow all the water out. Of course, there are some, some more details about it. Um, but in principle, we blow all the water out with air pressure. So another question from Michael. More and more people in the US are installing recirculating showers. Yeah. Did you install such, such, such systems yourself? Also, what do you use for water heating? Diesel heater that circulates uh, glycerin. Um, well, the, um, the, the water recirculation system for the shower we are using uh, is made by ourselves. Uh, uh, because we want to have it in 12 or 24 volt DC and, um, and it must be very compact and it must integrate with the faucets we are using. So um, yeah, we, we just build it ourselves. Um, uh, so what, what was the other part of the question? Sorry. Um, okay, uh, for water heating, yeah, we have a, we use a water heat exchanger, typically 40 to 60 liters of volume. And uh, there is one or two coils uh, going through it, uh, where the heating water uh, with, uh, um, with, with, uh, no, uh, with glycerin uh, where it's circulating. That's the same um, coolant that circulates through the radiators and through the whole heating system of the body. Um, we also install heat exchangers between the cooling system of the engine and the, uh, and the heating system of the body, but that's a heat exchanger, so it's not the same um, liquid, it's, uh, so it, it's, it's separated. And we also do uh, hot water with electricity. Uh, very often these days, the, the solar systems are so powerful that you actually sometimes have your batteries completely full and the solar system is shutting down because it has nothing to do and then you switch it uh, to make uh, uh, hot water through electricity. Um, okay, Sabine is asking, what do you recommend for water treatment, filter, chemicals, etc.? Uh, well, in the, in the vehicle uh, these days, we, we recommend and use um, a combi product of chlorine, and, uh, and silver ions, uh, which uh, clean the water and keep the water fresh for up to six months. That, that works just fine. And the UVC, as I mentioned earlier, um, is, I think, unfortunately, still a little bit down the road. So another, uh, okay. Um, yeah, filters inside the vehicle, we, we do not recommend to install filters. Keep the lines short keep the lines thin, um, uh, keep the water clean in your tanks, and uh, that, that's okay. So Patrick is asking, hi Thomas, do you expect to build light systems such as solid pop-up campers for Hilux trucks, for example? No, Patrick, unfortunately, that's not our plan. Um, we are actually super busy with building big vehicles. Um, and, and actually the, the, the percentage of six by six and even eight by eight vehicles is getting um, bigger and bigger. So we are, we are somehow are just uh, uh, sliding the other way. Yeah? Um, and um, so, um, yeah, I love the, the small vehicles. They have their advantages, and uh, and and they are more flexible. But but we have the technology to build the big vehicles. Uh, so building light is not really our specialty. I mean, we have built uh, uh, carbon fiber bodies for for Iveco Daily. Uh, so we we wanted to know. Um, how difficult it is and, and how strong it is and 
what are the pros and cons. So we, we technically can do that, but we, in the end, we do, we do build the vehicles uh, people are asking for, and that's uh, mainly uh, the bigger 4x4, 6x6, 8x8. Sorry about that. So Florian is asking, on ISIS space station, they reuse a fixed amount of water. It needs never to be refilled, just be filtered over and over again. Wouldn't this system be an improvement for your expedition vehicles? Uh, sure, if you give me the budget of ISS, when, then we make it, no problem. No, uh, honestly, um, the, well, on the ISS, there is no source of water. On planet Earth, um, you, you still find water. So um, the question is, um, does it make sense to build a, a, a complete uh, a system to reuse water. I mean, principally, it's uh, uh, distillation. Yeah, you make steam out of the water under if you do it under vacuum. The, the temperature doesn't have to be that high, but and then you cool it down again, and 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 you have distilled water. Yeah? Uh, distilled water is not uh, the best water you can find because you don't have any minerals uh, in that in distilled water. Um, so, uh, um, and it's expensive and, and the unit to, to distill it, to, 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 uh, yeah, to, to filter it and, and everything that's, uh, taking also quite some space and, um, and it, it makes, it makes sense if you just don't have any other source, except you would want to add a tank that uh, is good for, I don't know how long are they on the ISS, for months. Uh, so that would be a super big tank. And, and in that case, it obviously makes more sense to reuse the water. But in the vehicles, as you can find water, uh, it, it, uh, I think it doesn't make sense. So Victor is asking, what method do you use to clean your water system for maintenance? Uh, well, actually, uh, we, we, we clean it with chemicals. Uh, um, so um, with, uh, we don't try to clean it mechanically because you will never reach to each and every corner in the tank or in the system. So, um, there are tank cleaning products, and we use those um, at, a, at, a, at the maximum concentration. And, and then we just drive with the vehicle. And if you drive with the vehicle, the, the water is getting shaken all, all over the tanks, uh, like in a washing machine. And, and that way we, we clean the tanks, and then we empty the tanks, do it, do it another time, another time, and then um, tanks should be clean. So another question, do you have special drinking water tanks in your vehicles? Well, uh, we have done that on customer's request, um, but it's, it's nothing that we would recommend. Again, because we think that also the water uh, in the in the in the main freshwater tanks should be clean and in drinkable quality. Uh, and if you if you want uh, a special drinking water tank to fill it with bottled waters, uh, then why not keeping the water in the in the bottles uh, right away? Uh, the, the, the the you're not saving a lot of volume. Um, um, and um, if you if you do it in bottles, uh, then you can adjust the amount of bottles to to your needs. Uh, while if you install a, dr a special drinking water tank, that volume is always taken for that drinking water tank, no matter whether you really need it or not. And then the question is, uh, where 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 do you use it? Do you use it in the kitchen? Do you use it? In the bathroom, do you use it for the shower? I mean, um, 
you might think that when you take a shower, the, the water doesn't have to be that clean. Um, I think it has to be clean because um, the water spray it, that, that is created when you take a shower, that's um, more likely to go even into your, into your lungs um, and uh, uh, rather than only in your, in your throat and, and in your stomach. So I think the water always has to be clean wherever and whatever you use it for. Uh, Fred is asking, uh, how do you work out the relation between the capacities of the freshwater, grey water and black water tank? How large should every tank be? Yeah, well, the, the, the experience over the years just showed that the relation of uh, four times fresh water, one time grey water and one time black water is uh, almost ideal. Yeah? A black water tank can even be a little bit smaller than the grey water tank, but the fresh water tank should be like four times bigger than the grey water tank. Yeah? But of course, we are talking about a minimum of 400 liters of fresh water, so a minimum of 100 liters of uh, grey water, so that it at least lasts uh, two days um, if you are uh, traveling with two people. Uh, if you have to empty your grey water tank every day, then it's, uh, that's not really comfortable. No? So Daniel is asking, uh, could a suction toilet like on aircrafts be installed on an overlander truck? Um, yes, uh, the, the, the vacuum toilets are available. They are available for boats. Um, the, the aircraft stuff is uh, incredibly expensive and specially made and certified, so no need to use aircraft stuff. But, but from the boat industry, there are vacuum toilets available. We have used them in the past. The problem is um, uh, that the, it has to go through like a 40 millimeter uh, one and a half inch tube uh, and it has to go through a pump into the black water tank. So now if people are not careful with, uh, with uh, the amount of paper, the quality of the paper, the softness of the paper, or if they put other stuff in the toilet that, that can block the, the toilet system, it's quite likely that it happens and it happened and then you have to fix it. And that's not very nice uh, to work on a toilet system. Um, and uh, that's why, because of the, the, the problems of, of getting, of having the, the toilet systems blocked, uh, we gave up on, on these uh, uh, suction toilets. And another reason is that when you go to higher altitudes, which boats typically don't do, uh, the vacuum is getting less and less. Um, and, then, and then also the toilets doesn't really work um, in the mountains as good as on sea level. Um, so, but Yolino is asking, hi Thomas, thanks for the live chats, have you installed or would consider installing rainwater collection systems on your vehicles. Uh, no, we, we, we don't do that. Um, if, you, if you look on the roof of a truck, which you should do from time to time, just to clean your, your solar system, um, you will see that there is a lot of dirt collecting there. Um, and, um, if you, if you want to collect rainwater, you either have to wait quite a while until all that dirt is washed off, um, or you get all that dirt into your system. Uh, uh, so if you, if you wait long enough, maybe the rain is over. So it, it, such a system only works if you are in really uh, 
rainy areas um, and, and it has to rain a lot. Uh, and typically where you have a lot of rain, you also have rivers or lakes or other sources where that water is also collecting and is becoming available to be used by you to fill it into your tank. So using the roof uh, as a rain collector uh, is nothing we think makes sense. So Hunker Wheels asking, can you install a water filter system before loading the water into the tank? Yeah, that, that's actually the idea. Um, well, we, we could install it in, in a storage area and then you connect it and, and could also directly pipe it. But I think you should have all your filter systems um, uh, in, in a box yeah? and, um, and, and, and being able to, to clean the filters, uh, to dry the filters, um, and then use the filter types uh, you really need. Uh, so if you, if you only use, have one super fine filter, uh, and, and, and your water is, is just, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a little bit dirty, then a strainer would probably do it. So you should have filters of, of certain levels, uh, to be able to adapt to, to the situation. But, but that's equipment. Um, the most important thing is that you have a strong pump, a powerful pump, so that there is enough pressure to run the water through that filters but then keep them outside of the vehicle, uh, put them together as needed and, and fill your tanks and disconnect the whole stuff afterwards. That's my recommendation. So Sabine is asking, do you use stainless steel tanks? Uh, no, actually not. We, 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 we had stainless steel tanks, but actually, um, the, the only advantage of a stainless steel tank is that your, the hull, the, 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 the sheet metal is much thinner than if you use uh, a PE as a tank material. So you get a little more volume, but the problem is that um, if, if the tanks are quite big, um, then you get, a, you get movement in, in the sheet metal and, and it breaks the wells at the corners. And, uh, and that's why uh, we actually prefer uh, to use uh, custom built uh, PE tanks for our vehicles. Uh, question please, you build only MIN trucks. Uh, can I build my expedition truck with uh, uh, Actros Mercedes? Yes, no, no problem. We, the, the man trucks uh, have just established themselves as the benchmark and as many people are using them, new prospects, new people say, must be a good truck and actually it's a good truck, but uh, there is no doubt that, that the Mercedes truck uh, is all, on the same quality level. There are, uh, Differences in details, uh, for example, the axle configuration, the gearboxes are different. Of course, the, the engines are different, uh, but both are very good trucks and, and we have used Mercedes Actros and, uh, uh, and, and we also use Cetros and, and Unimark. So um, we are happy to use Mercedes products, no, no doubt. So Christopher is asking, uh, are your tanks and pipes accessible for inspection, cleaning or replacement of pipes? Um, yes, of course. Um, I mean, everything you bury will break. That's Murphy's law. So if, if you don't have, if you do not have access to something, that's the first thing that will fail. Uh, um, so we, we, uh, we install all the, the pipes along the walls in, in brackets, and uh, then we, we put the furniture on top after that, uh, because it's just the easier way to install it. But generally, uh, you can access 
each uh, part, each each section uh, of the piping um, to uh, to uh, do a replacement or repair or inspection if needed. So Victor is asking any tips how to deal with all the different water system connections all over the world for filling up. Uh, yeah, we had a we had a, a, a live about equipment and I showed uh, some water adapters there. So um, the, the, the most useful thing is, I mean, bes beside the uh, hard, three eighths uh, threaded uh, pipe connector, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, which are very common um, with uh, inner thread and outer thread. Um, which are all available, for example, from Gardena system. Uh, uh, the so-called water thieves are quite nice, which is a flexible rubber piece on one side, so which can be attached to many different uh, tubes or outlets. Um, and you just have to, to buy, <coughs> excuse me, um, pretty much all these connectors. Uh, and then you have a bag full of stuff and, and that will help you out in, in uh, pretty much all cases. Uh, and we supply these connectors for, for our customers. We typically uh, provide a full set of equipment for self-recovery, for um, supply of electric power, water and so on, including hoses and so on and so forth. Uh, so, so let's make this the last question. As, uh, so the question is, what do you think about a tank in tank system? Well, I, I think um, um, the, a, t a tank in tank system um, could be um, a, a flexible tank in a solid tank. And because when, when you use water, from, from your, let's say, from the solid tank part, um, you could actually pump that water as gray water into the flexible part. Okay, so that, that would be an improvement of use of volume, no doubt. Um, but um, it's quite complex. Yeah? Um, it's not so easy to build a proper uh, flexible tank that that is installed in a, in a solid tank. And um, you have to imagine that your freshwater tank might be quite empty, while your gray water tank, the flexible tank in the other tank is quite full. Imagine how that thing will bounce around uh, when you go off-road. Um, so um, that's uh, why we are a little bit skeptical uh, if that would be something really reliable. Yeah? And uh, yeah, another way of uh, would be if you have a filtration system, so you have your, your raw water in the outer uh, chamber and then you filter it and, and clean it and put it in the, in the inner one. But you have the same, the same problems to, to, to keep the, the flexible tank uh, stable when you go off-road, that, that's a bit of a problem. Okay, so um, hopefully there was <laughs> a bit of interesting stuff for you um, here in, in what, I, what I was telling and, and in, the, in the answers I gave. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, please come back next time. Uh, sign up for our <laughs> channel if you want, uh, ring the bell so you, you, you get a notice uh, when we have the next uh, live and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the day and uh, stay self, safe and healthy and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.